Hi guys, today we're going to set up an electronic lab notebook. Um, so this is a really important part of contributing to the open source malaria initiative so that we can share our results with all the other researchers around the world working on this uh, really important uh, project. So there's uh, three main sites, as you're aware, um, that are important for sharing information around the open source malaria initiative. Uh, one is the openwetware.org site, which is a wiki, and that really goes through a lot of the background information about how to contribute to the site and uh, what has been achieved so far and what compound series are being worked on. There's also the uh, this open source malaria um, sort of more of a blog style site, which includes all of the lab notebook entries. And then there's the GitHub, and we won't be looking at it today, but um, I'm going to focus on how to get this uh, lab notebook set up. Okay, so there's, um, like many aspects of this initiative, there's already a lot of information online, it's just a matter of finding it. So within this wiki, there's this uh, link over here that's just a bit hidden called TechOps. And I'm already on that page, so TechOps just gives a lot of background about how to set up a lab notebook, how to look at molecules, uh, things relevant to medicinal chemistry and so on. So if you follow through the information under lab notebook here, you really better do everything that I'm talking about in today's video, but I, I think sometimes a video can be quite helpful in guiding you through the experience. Um, so if we look at uh, this entry on um, the wiki, if we click on uh, the general entry, it takes us actually to the lab notebook um, where the instructions for how to use the lab notebook are actually uh, entered as lab notebook or, or um, blog entries. So I think that's quite a nice little use of the tool. So to use this electronic lab notebook system, we'll need to have an account. And thankfully, this is a very simple process because they use an open authentication system, which allows you to use your Google credentials to log in. I've already done that, so I won't go through it with you, but the instructions are very simple and they're listed on this particular blog entry. Um, on the OSM site. So when I click on login, I'll be taken to this um, little pop-up that shows you a Google um, icon. You can click on that and it takes you to your list of Google accounts. You can use your university provided uh, Gmail account if you're a Griffith Uni student. Um, so I'll click on the account that I've already set up. If you haven't set one up already, then the, the system is very straightforward. You just need to put in a few more details and you'll be taken to a new screen. Okay, once you've uh, set up an account and logged in, then you have a new screen. Yours will probably look a little bit different to mine. Um, and you don't have to set up a new notebook because uh, if you're working with my group on this open uh, source malaria project, then we're going to use the one notebook and each of the students working on the project will ha enter their own entries on their, their own account. So if you click on all notebooks up here, then uh, you'll see all the notebooks that have been set up by various people around the world working on this initiative. So I'll point out a few things here. One of them is that there's a few groups that have done a lot of work in this area. So there's a group in Haverford that have done a lot of experiments um, on these uh, anti-malarial compounds. And there's also other groups such as uh, groups at uh, Sydney University um, that have done a lot of work in this area too. So if you follow this link, for example, to the triazolopyrazine series, which has been, this notebook's been started by Alice Williamson. If you click on that, then you'll see all of the lab notebook entries for, um, for the group that are working on that. And over here, you can see the list of authors. You can, uh, it's quite handy because um, you can see that there's been some major contributors to this area, such as uh, Alice and some other um, students that have worked on this, this project. So if you click on, for example, Alice Williamson, then you can go to uh, all the, the lab book entries for uh, her. And you can see she's been working on it as recently as the 11th of May this year. Um, now, what we're interested in, though, is contributing to the Griffith Uni lab notebook. I've set one up under Griffith Uni Trazolopyrazines. It's got my name attached to it. That's just because I set up the notebook and you know, made the first entry. Uh, however, anyone can contribute to it. Uh, so this is, you know, part of the open source nature of uh, the project. And so each of you uh, can contribute under your own login to this particular notebook. 
Okay, all that is there at the moment is one entry that I've set up as a sort of pro forma or an example of how to set up a lab notebook entry. So I'll just go through that with you quickly. Firstly, uh, it's got a descriptive title, synthesis of some compound name. And then we've got a summary uh, that tells us why we're working on this particular compound, why we'd like to make it. And I really, uh, I think it's really important because GitHub is the place where uh, all of the um, new ideas are being discussed and the um, reporting to, to and from other people around the world uh, on this project is being done. I think it's really important to link uh, the experiments in the ELN back to the GitHub issue or issues that they're related to. Um, then you can provide a reference. This could be uh, just um, the sort of uh, ACS style reference to a journal article, or it could be a URL to any um, web resource. It could be a link to a file, or it's very easy to link to other uh, electronic lab notebook entries, which is really uh, nice. So if we click on this, it will take us to uh, Alice Williamson's um, synthesis of this particular compound. So I'll just go back. Then, um, really important in chemistry to have a, a, a picture that shows you why you're doing the synthetic steps, so a reaction scheme. Um, I've then got an example procedure, and this is, uh, you know, it, it's just an idea about how you can write this kind of um, lab notebook entry. You may want to go into a lot more detail, particularly early on in your chemistry or career, you might want to put in a lot more detail about how you set up the experiment and so on. I've really pasted in what goes into uh, theses and reports and journal articles. So it's very brief, very concise. doesn't give a lot of the kind of detail that um, many students would want to know when they're first setting up a reaction. Um, probably most importantly, you need to have a risk assessment. So we've got our own process at Griffith University for doing this. And so the simplest, simplest way to include this is to generate a PDF from your risk assessment and then to um, put that in as a link into the uh, ELN entry. Uh, then as your um, experiment proceeds, you'll generate some data. You'll have TLC plates. You may have photographs of them. You'll have NMRs, infrared perhaps, mass spec, and so on. And you can attach these as files of various different formats. Um, it's really nice if you can use uh, PNG or JPEGs of TLCs. So you can just click on them directly to, or see them directly in the uh, lab notebook entry. Uh, for Spectra, um, I think it's good to have two different versions. So you can have a PDF, so you can click on that, anyone can view it. And then also the raw files, so the other chemists, either uh, yourself or other chemists within our group, or other groups around the world, can actually go to the source data that you've generated and um, rework it or uh, compare it to their own data if they're working on this procedure or similar procedures. And then finally, you won't have this for all of the lab notebook entries, but you can have characterization data for the uh, new compounds that you've made. So many of the compounds of the STAR or synthetic route will be known to science already, and you may not need these this detailed characterization data. You'll be generating NMRs and comparing them to uh, other people's NMRs, and that will generally be enough to convince ourselves whether we've made the right compound or not, or the desired compound. But when you get to new compounds, new territory, it's really important to fully characterize these with data such as proton NMR, carbon-13 NMR, mass spec, and so on. And so you can see an example layout of how to set up that. And this is according to the kind of standard that is used in most uh, major chemistry journals around the world and in um, honors, PhD theses, and so on. And then finally, and this is quite different to a traditional uh, research project, uh, a non-open source project, uh, to be able to access um, data from uh, other uh, people, we really want to be able to do searches for chemicals. And a really convenient way to do that is to search by inches or by smiles codes. And there's pluses and minuses of both of these. I won't go into the details, but if you can paste in these strings, these ASCII strings, both the INCHI and the SMILES codes into the electronic lab notebook, then that will allow your lab notebook entries to be findable by people searching um, through Google, for example, for particular entries that involve compounds that you've made. Okay, so there's that's an example. I just will show you when you are using the lab notebook yourself, 
you were going to set up a new entry over on this part of the page over here. So you click on New Entry and it will give you a brand new slate where you can um, start your, your work. So normally it's type synthesis of uh, some particular compound and I've already got that from my first entry. And then you can fill in this according to that sort of template that I showed you before. So I'll show you a few little uh, tips about how to uh, organize your entry. So you can insert a link within the notebook entry, and uh, this is most um, uh, this is a really convenient way to set up a link to someone else's lab notebook. So you can uh, click on this notebook link here and click on the drop down list, then go to, for example, the triazolopyrazine series. Um, and then click on by date or uh, by uh, name within those particular dates, a particular entry, and that will come up as a, a hyperlink within your uh, ELN entry. You can also insert um, a data file embedded within your um, within your entry. You can insert a table. There's limited functionality here, but you might find it useful. And you can insert an image. Now, image is going to be really useful for the reaction scheme. However, it's not quite as straightforward as cutting and pasting. So um, I recommended to my students who use uh, freeware for drawing structures. Uh, one example where you can get a free license uh, as an academic or as a, a student is the Marvin Sketch software. So I've got Marvin Sketch open with a uh, simple reaction that's at the start of many of these um, OSM procedures. If you uh, then within Marvin, uh, save that or actually export it as an image and make sure that image is a PNG file. I've already done this, so sample scheme.png. And then we can save that. And I'll just have right and uh, go through that page there. Go down to the bottom here where it says attached files and click on upload data. So we'll click on that and then we'll go to our um, directory. And just drag that file across to the little box here. And it's not uploaded yet. We need to say start upload and it will upload that file. And we can drag more than one file if that's convenient. We'll close that window down. Now what we need is a link to that file. It's now on uh, the uh, malariaourexperiment.org site. So to get that um, URL, we need to click on the file that we've just uploaded. And it will come up in the box here, but there's one little extra trick here. To get it to appear nicely within our lab notebook entry, we don't just want that URL that's at the top there. We need to actually download it as a PNG file. And that actually gives us the URL to the PNG itself. So we'll um, highlight that and we'll copy that to the clipboard. And then we'll go across and click on this little icon here. It looks like a little tree against the background. Click on that and we'll paste in that URL. Now we can put a description here and that's uh, quite a nice thing to do if anyone is browsing the site using a screen reader or a um, web uh, software that doesn't, they don't have images turned on. So we could say uh, synthesis of blah from blah. There you go, I've done that before. And just click on insert. If you don't put that description in, it just comes up with a warning saying, do you really want to go ahead with that description? Okay, so now our um, reaction scheme is nicely inserted in line into the uh, lab notebook entry. And then we can go on with the, the rest of our um, procedure. So we can um, put in procedure here. I've just gone control B there to make it bold, but you can use the little tools at the top here, like you know most sort of web uh, apps have this kind of interface. Uh, we'll return, and then you can write in whatever you want for the procedure. Um, get rid of that bold if you want. Um, and then um, well, you can cut and paste from the example procedure I have over here, or you can start afresh, depends on exactly what you think will be easiest. Uh, now, most importantly, we really need to have a risk assessment for all the chemistry reactions we're doing. So I'll cut and paste that over here. And I think the best way to do this is to attach um, a PDF file. So at Griffith University, we've got our own risk assessment procedures. And you can generate that PDF and then just um, upload it to the uh, website and then paste that in as a data file. 
So we'll do the same procedure here. We'll go upload data. And I've got a, just a sample PDF file over here. It's actually not the risk assessment, it's just a copy of the um, reaction scheme. But just to show you how this works with PDFs, we'll upload that, close that window, and go back to our lab notebook. And now you can see that second uh, file is here as a PDF. Now, uh, what we're going to do is add that uh, as that link to the text. So we'll go to the right part of our lab notebook entry add that to the text and it comes up as this little um, uh, line here. And now if we want to see what our lab notebook would look like we can actually click on this button here that says preview and then it'll come up with a new window showing what it looks like. So this entry will come up with a little box you can click on to get to that PDF file. And I think that's what we want in terms of risk assessments. And then after that we can put in our uh, data and we can have that there uh, as further PDF files or zip files uh, for raw data and so on, etc. And uh, then finally, I won't go through uh, this characterization data here, but we'll go through this compound strings. So if we have a section for that in our lab notebook entry, so we'll, we'll paste in those strings from uh, using Marvin in this case. We'll select the starting material and we'll say edit as, copy as, and then go down to inches already just selected, and that's copied it to the clipboard, and then we'll insert it in this position here. We can select it, get rid of that, and paste. And then um, we want to have that going to a different molecule. So we'll select this other molecule here, and we'll say edit copy as inchy and then paste again and uh, for reasons why I won't go into now um, it's beneficial to have more than one way of saying what the molecules are so we'll also use a smiles co code so we'll select that we'll go back to Marvin and select the first molecule the starting material and say copy as smiles go back over here and paste and then go to the second molecule copy as smiles and paste that into the bottom there. So now we've got this inchy going to the product inchy and the starting material smile string going to this product uh, smile string. Okay, so I think that's about all I wanted to show you as far as the uh, entering uh, the information into the electronic lab notebook entry. To get this finalized, firstly we just want to select a section. So really, uh, I think um, generally you want to select experiments. You can actually type in new sections, so you can have a separate section just for um, a recharacterization of a compound or something like that, or for some particular thing. But we'll just use the experiment section. Uh, we'll ignore this metadata for now. And then you can click Save for later if you're going to be updating this lab book entry. Or you can click Publish if you're going to make it now publicly available uh, and put up onto the um, lab notebook uh, section. So click on Publish. And now that is um, a new lab notebook entry that anyone can visit and uh, can uh, you can go back and uh, make adjustments to it or whatever you like. Okay, so that's it for today. Good luck with your synthesis.